but can they at least agree to disagree and get along a lot better than they have um, so far? Well, first of all, I think we have to consider that there's a there's a there's a gap between how the Saudis and the Emiratis would approach Iran and how they want to restore the relations. We've noticed a more softer approach coming from the UAE side recently, which didn't align with the Saudi uh, approach uh, to uh, isolate or have wars uh, to worsen the relationship or the relations with Iran. So there's a gap between Saudi and the UAE. So when Iran approaches the Gulf states, it's approaching different states, it's approaching different governments and different politicians with different strategies. Of course, and a lot of times they do have a collective aligned uh, approach towards Iran, but also, as we've seen recently, they do uh, disagree on how to approach Iran. I would disagree with your guest on one point regarding Iran's action in the regions. Um, and the Iranian actions in the region is not based on only reactions. Of course, there could be a lot of reactions. But I don't think there would be any uh, justification uh, to its actions in Iraq, for example. Iraq is a, is a vulnerable country that was uh, that, that Iranian regional expansionism took an advantage of when after the U.S.-led invasion of Iraq. And that takes us back to the whole idea, to the topic of our show today, is that Iraq is not in a position to mediate between Iran and other countries in the region. In fact, Iraq is a country that needs to restore its relations with Iran. The relationship between Iran and Iraq today is very problematic. The Iranian involvement in Iraqi politics and domestic affairs is very problematic. So I think we need to, I think the Iranian government needs to consider, reconsider its relationship and relations and involvement in Iraq before it considers Iraq to be a mediator between other countries in the, in the region or in the Gulf. But Zaydun, on, on that point you just made there at the end, um, Iraq sort of doesn't really have a choice at this point in time, right? I mean, in the sense that um, the assassination of Qasem Soleimani and Abu Mahdi Mohandas took place on Iraqi soil, then the Iranian retaliation took place on Iraqi soil. So Iraq is sort of in this mess, whether it likes it or not? Yeah, but it was forced to be into, into that mess. So the killing of Soleimani was, was an operation, was a U.S. military operation on Iraqi soil targeting an, an Iranian general, which they succeeded. So this, this is an Iranian, this is a U.S. Iran, Iran, Iran uh, conflict or dispute going on on Iraqi soil. I don't think uh, having better relations with Saudi Arabia and the UAE is going to uh, decrease the U.S. Uh, hegemonic uh, actions towards Iran on Iraqi soil. We both know as much as, as much as Iran and the U.S. might find a lot of common indicators and interests in Iraq, they're currently trying to orchestrate this whole dispute, who's going to take over Iraq or who's going to control uh, Iraqi economy, Iraqi politics, and so on. Now it might have minimized a bit than it was in the, in the, in the early stages after uh, the killing of Soleimani. But okay. again, I don't, think, I don't think opening up and having better relations with Saudi Arabia and Iran is going to, to, to calm things down between the U.S. and Iran in the short term. When it comes to the assassination of Qasem Soleimani, uh, one of the things that came out from that, um, I believe it was the UAE that gave a muted statement when that when that incident occurred. Um, uh, and I think that there was a concern, right, on the part of all of the above countries, including Saudi Arabia and the UAE, about regional security at that point, because right after the assassination, everyone was waiting with bated breath to see what the ir Iranian reaction would actually be. And if we were actually going to then enter into uh, another world war, as you know, as the most negative and pessimistic points of view were saying. Um, do you think that there's now a realization that there does need to still be in this outreach to Iran on the part of Saudi Arabia and the UAE as well? Um, and possibly that may have begun with the assassination of Soleimani? Well, of course, the, the, the more approach, approach, the more the better relations, the better, the better uh, negotiations that would happen between the countries in the Gulf, whether it's between Iran and Saudi Arabia and the UAE, it's for the better of the region and for the better of the region, regional stability. But it is very hard to, to try to rebuild or re reconstruct a relationship with a country where you have very prominent issues and conflicts that you're disagreeing on. Iraq is, is unfortunately one of those uh, political playgrounds or arenas that they heavily disagree on. Therefore, using that arena as a mediator between them two makes it very confusing and problematic because that makes you ignore one issue and try to solve another issue, which is less important than that. And Iraq is a much more complex uh, situation in today, in 2020, than the relationship between Saudi Arabia and Iran. But well, going back to the point made by your guest regarding the Iranian military involvement or presence in Iraq, 
uh, mm. is, is, is welcomed by the Iraqi government. Well, the U.S. invasion was also welcomed by this very same Iraqi government that the U.S. invasion installed. And this is, this is one of the main reasons why people are protesting today in Iraq, alongside unemployability, sectarianism, uh, the security, water crisis. It's one of the, main, one of the major issues that, pe- that drove people to go on the streets is yeah. because that the Iranian military presence in Iraq is because of the U.S. military presence in Iraq, which is welcomed by the, the, the Iraqi government in Baghdad. People are not happy about it. If the Iranian government or the Iranian side sees it as a cooperation, which I am shocked that they do, if they do, for Iraqis, they find it as an indirect invasion. Having a military, having a military presence of another state within your own state is problematic, and it's even more problematic when those militias are controlling the political scene in your country, when that country okay. is using those militias for their proxy interest in Iraq, reaching to the level that they would even get involved in on who would be the prime minister of Iraq. I don't see that as a cooperation. I see that as a destabilization, as a mm. meddling into another country's affairs, and just to expand... All right, Zaydun, I'm going to kind of cut you off. I do apologize. It's just the clock has gotten the best of us. Uh, um, but we do, of course, appreciate both yourself and Tawheed for your time today and for, of course, providing um, your points of view because it's, it, this, viewers, uh, goes to show, of course, that the issues that we're talking about